What up everybody, Instruct the Beats back again here with our volume unit. Today we're going to be taking a look at the volume of a cylinder. So let's pop the top and look at our objective today. Our objective today, today I will be able to demonstrate where the volume of a cylinder formula came from and be able to solve volume of a cylinder questions. So I guess before we do that, we should probably take a look at what a cylinder is. A cylinder is a geometric solid that has two circles, put an S right there, for the base and top, and then the sides are perpendicular to the base. So let's take a closer look at a picture of this and really talk about what a cylinder is and how it's different than a right prism. So here we have our cylinder and you can see that we have a circle for the top and a circle for the bottom and then our sides are perpendicular or I know this doesn't look like it because it's hard to draw a 3D shape on a 2D object. It would it forms a right angle as it comes to the top. All right. And then if you actually the cool thing about this is if you unravel this and make a net of a cylinder, it is a rectangle and then you can just see the two circles kind of looks like a plus sign. It's like you unwrap the side and it makes a rectangle. Now you know this from our circle lessons, but a circle has a radius, okay? And that's gonna be um, from the center to the side. And then the cylinder obviously also has a height of how tall it is. And so we are actually going to treat this just like we would treat a right prism. And our formula for this is area of the base times the height. Again, just like you're doing when you're finding the volume of a right prism, you wanna find out how many cubic units make the bottom layer and then you're gonna multiply that by how many layers you would need to fill it up. Now to find the area of a circle, it's not nice and neat like a rectangle where it's just length times width, right? You know this from our circle lessons. To find the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. So we're starting with the same formula, still area of the base times the height, but now to find the area of the base, to find the area of that circle, we have to use the formula for an area of a circle, which again, came from the area of a parallelogram in a rectangle. And if you haven't seen our lesson on that, please check that out. So here's our volume formula for a cylinder, but it comes from, again, area of the base times the height, just like everything else. Let's look at the steps for using our volume formula. So hopefully you see this is the exact same thing as before, except now we're doing a cylinder. You're still gonna find the area of the base, except now you're gonna use the formula for a circle. You still need to find the height or how many layers of that area you're going to need to fill in the entire cylinder and then use the formula to solve how many cubic units fill in the entire cylinder. So let's take a look at an I do problem. So we, here we have a uh, instruct a soup can, okay, made by instruct the beats. Check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and any other social media site. Just a quick plug for us. And the question says this instructive soup can has a radius of eight centimeters and a height of 15 centimeters. How many cubic centimeters of soup would I need to fill the cylinder in completely with creamy and delicious, might I add, there you go, instructive soup. So I know I'm looking for blank cubic centimeters or blank centimeters cubed, okay? Um, and I'm trying to fill it. And it told me the height of the can was 15 centimeters and the radius was eight. And again, just because the circles are not right now on the bottom and the top doesn't mean we can't manipulate this shape to make them the top and bottom. So now we can find the area of the base. And again, just like with rectangles and cubes and all the other things you can do, if you can't see the base, you can use the top because the top and bottom are going to be the same shape in the same size in a cylinder or a right prism. So it says we have a radius of eight here. Okay, there you go. Fill that in, eight centimeters. And the height of the can was 15 centimeters and you wanna figure out the volume. So now you have enough to figure out the area of the base. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out, okay, how many, um, how many cubic units do I need to fill in the bottom layer? So instead of using area of the base times the height, I'm going to trade out the area of the base for pi r squared. And then I wanna figure out how many layers I need of that. So my volume is gonna equal pi, eight, squared times 15 layers and to solve that you can use a calculator again today you don't need to do this in your head now typically just for pi we know it's a irrational number it's going to go on forever but if you're doing it on a calculator and there's no pi sign you can just use 3.14 and that's typically the accepted value of pi when you don't have that pi button on your calculator now your answer might be off um, and that's okay uh, because typically you would truncate your answer anyway after the hundredth 
So when I solve for the area of the base, it told me that the area of the base was 296 hundredths centimeters squared, and then I need to multiply that times 15 layers, and when I multiply it times 15, 3,000, there we go, 14 and 4 tenths centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. So it would take 3,014 and 4 tenths cubic centimeters of delicious, creamy Instructa soup to completely fill this cylinder. Now again, if you have a pie button, it might have taken that decimal place out a few more places and that's totally okay. I just multiplied using 3.14 as pi. Let's take a look at a we do problem now. So here again, we have a watch battery here. It says this watch battery has a height of two hundredths of an inch. What is the volume of the battery? Again, when we're trying to find volume, we wanna figure out how many cubic units fill in a shape. So we wanna find that bottom layer by using our area formula to figure out, okay, what is the area of the base of this cylinder? And we're gonna say the area of the base is again, pi r squared. And we're gonna multiply that times how many layers? And it said we had a height here of 0 0.02 inches. So we're gonna multiply this by 0 0.02 or 2 hundredths. So now I know my radius was 4 tenths. So I'm gonna do 4 tenths squared times 0 0.02. Again, you can just use 3.14 as pi. And when you do that, you find out that this tiny cylinder has a volume of 0 0.010048 inches cubed okay so a lot smaller than our instructor beats can um, but again this is a watch battery so it's very very tiny and so that's how you do the volume right it's the same exact thing as find the volume of right prism we're still using area of the base times the height except to find that bottom layer to find the area of the base we are using a different formula we had to use the formula for a circle so this is what we want you to take with you today. Finding the volume starts with finding the area of the base. No matter what the shape is, it's all coming from the volume formula, area of the base times the height. Now, as you get into cylinder and spheres, it's gonna look entirely different, but that formula was manipulated. It came from the volume formula, area of the base times height. We're trying to figure out how many cubic units does it take to fill an object. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online. We hope you will like and subscribe. Join our Instructor Beats family. You can follow us on all our social media accounts. And please check out our volume song. Uh, we love it. We know you'll love it. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.